Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Logan. I give the movie a C+. Logan stars Hugh Jackman, once again reprising his role as Logan, a.k.a. James Howlett, a.k.a. Wolverine. This is potentially his final time performing this role, at least in live action. Also returning is Patrick Stewart as the elder Charles Xavier, and Caliban from a previous X-Men movie is also in this film. Logan is the second R-rated live-action X-Men movie, and this movie definitely takes as much use of that R rating as possible. This movie is essentially a road trip film with a lot of violence and a lot of gore. The story takes place in 2029. In this movie, mutants are almost totally wiped out. There was some type of grand tragedy or scheme or plot that happened many years ago that is hinted at in the movie but isn't fully explained. But there is a very new mutant named Laura. She's this little girl about 11 years old. And it's up to Logan and Charles Xavier to get Laura from the Mexican border to North Dakota. Once in North Dakota, Laura will hopefully be able to get into Canada where mutants are protected. So as I mentioned, this is an R-rated film. There's lots of action, there's lots of gore, there's lots of blood. Uh, Wolverine finally gets the opportunity to cut loose. And it did take me a little while to get used to everyone cursing so much, uh, being that this and the Deadpool movie are the only R-rated films and we've had over a decade of PG-13 affairs. <laughs> it did take a little tweaking, but once I did, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much, especially Patrick Stewart both as a fan of Patrick Stewart, the actor, and the elder Charles Xavier character. It was just fun to hear uh, him cursing up a storm and saying pretty much every expletive he could possibly say. Uh, and it's probably pretty fun for Patrick Stewart as well. Patrick Stewart is a very accomplished actor with a very wide library in his repertoire. But ever since Star Trek The Next Generation, it's pretty much been... Uh, PG, uh, PG-13, or even G-rated films with uh, just a couple of grown-up stuff here and there. So he just probably just loves the opportunity to really let loose and just speak his uh, mind. Uh, I'm quite sure he enjoyed this very, very much. One of the things I appreciated about this movie is that there is no romantic subplot whatsoever. Lots of times in movies, especially in action movies, they try to put in some type of romantic connection. Usually it's the lead character's wife or girlfriend or fiance. Uh, and if it's not the lead character, then there's a pair of sub-characters that are romantically entangled. Like in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, where we had Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. You know, there always got to be some type of romantic connection. Whereas this movie, it's not there at all. There's not even hints of romance. There's no callbacks to Jean Grey suddenly popping in and having visions of Jean Grey. There's no mention of previous lovers, which is both a blessing and a curse because there's only one other female character in the movie besides Laura, and she's killed off uh, very quickly. Uh, she's pretty much there for exposition. And once she's gone, the movie becomes pretty much a total sausage fest. All the bad guys are men. Almost every sub-character you meet are men. It's not until much later in the movie where we see a notable female character, and I'll talk about that in the parts that I disliked about the film. So while I appreciate that there's no shove in romance uh, like in so many other movies, I mean, we couldn't get a couple of other females. We couldn't get the store clerk to be a female or the valet parking person to be a female. You know, we couldn't have a couple other females. All right, this movie's going to take place in 2029. Uh, mutants have almost been extinct, but I'm pretty sure women are still around. So getting into the things I didn't like, while this movie has a lot of action, uh, Logan is not a big talker, and Laura is an even less talker, so there's just a lot of... And in fact, the evil corporation wind up making an X-24, which is an even more enhanced clone of Wolverine, and he has no real lines. He just goes... 
uh, so it was a whole lot of, which is fine for a few minutes here and there when Wolverine is usually a, a sub character, you know, at least with uh, movies by Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone or even Bruce Willis, you know, there's an occasional get to the chopper or get out of here, or, come on, or move, you know, I'll be back. You know, there's little dialogue clicks here and there, but no, this is just, it's really annoying, especially when this is a, a two hour, 21 minute film. That's a lot of growling to watch for uh, two hours and 21 minutes. Another big problem is X-23 as far as her skills. The evil corporation is trying to artificially manufacture units to make them weapons. So they create all these clones inside this facility in Mexico and they start training the kids as soon as their powers are developed, which is fine. But it also said that these kids have never been outside, have never seen the sky, have never seen snow, have never seen grass. Yet, X-23 manages to navigate a map. She figures out how to drive only after being in a car for a few days. And when they get to uh, North Dakota, the other kids that escape are also there. And there's this one character named Richter. He's like the eldest of the kids, but he's, what, maybe 13 at best. I, I don't understand how these kids who have never been outside managed to traverse the country on their own, essentially. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And plus, uh, during the climax, the kids are running away from the troopers. And I'm thinking, okay, aren't you guys trained as weapons? Shouldn't you defend yourself a little more? There are a couple of units that try to defend themselves, but ultimately they just were running and running and running. And I'm like, okay, they're kids and they want to get to the border, hopefully, and outrun the guys. But on the other hand, they're super-powered creatures. They've been trained to fight, or at least encouraged to fight, you know, so they should be fighting these uh, henchmen. Uh, so it's just sort of weird. Like, what do these kids know and not know? How is it they can traverse the country? How is it that they figured out how to drive? How is it they know how to administrate medicine? Uh, and yet, I don't know. There's what I've been sheltered the entire life. It just doesn't make sense. Now here's why this movie, which should be getting something like a B plus or even an A for me, is getting a C plus. Uh, the other female that I mentioned is a black woman, part of this black family that Logan and Charles Xavier and Laura happen to meet along the highway. As soon as you see this black family, it's like, they aren't going to kill these people, are they? They are not going to kill them, and yes, they wind up killing them. They kill the father, the mother, and the uh, teenage son. It's probably maybe like 14-ish. And while kudos to them having courage to actually kill a young person, you're going to kill the only black people in the movie. And by only black people, I mean they are the only black people in the entire film up to that point. After that point, after they're all killed, there's a quick moment where the evil corporation head talks to one of his henchmen and that henchman has to be black but that is the only time you ever see that henchman you don't even see him at the beginning so I have no idea who this guy is it's the one scene where he's in and the other time is one of the mutant kids he's a, a little chubby black kid and he has electricity powers but he doesn't get a real line or anything that he giggles or he runs and he's scared but he doesn't have an actual line so you know besides that one henchman and that one little uh, chubby mutant at the very end there are another black people. They literally kill the token black people. That's inexcusable, especially since we just had the whole Black Lives Matter movement and the Oscar So White movement. I mean, call me, you know, racist if you want to, but it's just absurd that in this day and age, we're still having the token black people getting killed and almost the minorities in general because uh, Laura's nurse is Latina. Uh, in the story, it said that uh, the evil corporations used uh, women in Mexico to be the incubators for the mutant kids, and the fathers are just test tubes. Uh, they're all been artificially inseminated. Uh, so the Latina actress, she gets killed off, and Laura, she can speak Spanish, and she is a Spanish uh, actress that's playing her, is a 
uh, of some type of Latin descent. But still, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, I don't know, five years from now, three years from now, uh, they decide to cast an older Laura and suddenly forget that she's actually uh, Latina. Uh, maybe she'll like, speak Spanish, but don't be surprised if something someone that looks like uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, winds up playing Laura in the future. But anyway, getting back to my point, it's absurd, it's ridiculous, and that's going to automatically lower uh, the rating I get for a movie. When you do something that is so... Uh, politically and socially outdated uh, in serious. You do it for a laugh. You do it for a joke. You do it like in uh, uh, some of the parody movies where they talk about, oh, the black people wind up getting killed. You know, that's fine. But when you do this in a serious movie that freaking takes place in the future, by the way, you know, it, it's, it's just absurd. It's inexcusable. I am insulted uh, and... I'm sorry, maybe you won't have a problem with that, but I do, and I'm sick of it. So lack of women and killed off all the black people, that's gonna that's why this movie, which probably would have gotten an A or A minus, is gaining a C plus. Okay, thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.